This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. going on you guys man welcome back to yet another king jibs video i gotta say really quick before we start lately i've been in a much better mood with fall kind of you know just starting to take over the weather you know we had rain last night in california and that's something that i haven't seen in the last couple of months so it's kind of put me in this mood to make a lot more videos so i'm gonna start pounding them out here in the next couple of weeks probably could have phrased that better right <laughs> Anyways, you guys, this episode is going to be split up into two different sections. The first half is going to talk about a piece of gear that I recently just acquired. Uh, it's a camera bag, and I want to talk a little bit more about why I chose this particular style bag. And in the second half of this episode, I want to talk about what I feel like is the best storytelling lens. Uh, now, with that said, I think a lot of you guys may be surprised with what I have to say today. And so just stay tuned until that second part because we're going to dive in depth and I'm even going to show some sample photographs. So with that said, you guys, grab some coffee, grab your cameras, grab some film, whatever you want. Uh, and let's jump right into today's episode. All right, guys, so as you may know already for, you know, the last two years or so, I've been carrying around this Brevity backpack. And don't get me wrong, Brevity makes amazing backpacks. Now, with that said, it's been my everyday backpack. And so it's something that anytime that I go out to create or maybe even just to like a coffee shop that I bring my laptop with, the bag has constantly been there. And surprisingly, it's held up very, very well for these last two years. And that just goes to show not only, you know, the quality of that particular bag, but just how dedicated I was to using that bag only. But lately, I haven't really been going to coffee shops or, you know, just taking a bunch of gear with me out when I do go out and shoot. Um, I actually prefer now to travel very, very light, you know, without a bag um, at all, if possible. Of course, that's not always, you know, the case, especially if I have to lug around video gear because I do make these videos. Um, but I did find a little solution, a solution that I feel like is the perfect middle ground to have in a bag while still being able to travel light. And that bag, folks, is this guy right here. It's this kind of smaller messenger styled leather bag. And the particular brand, again, this is not a promoted thing or sponsored uh, kind of, you know, piece of gear at all. I'm not even going to say just because I've never heard of them before, but I will leave a link in the description below to the bag just in case you guys are curious about it. All right, so just a quick little overview of the bag and why I chose this one in the first place. Uh, first of all, it's a leather bag, which is great. You know, it feels nice, very soft to the touch. Um, and it's also, you know, for the most part, very high quality. It has these kind of like nice bronze metal kind of buckles and uh, accent details all throughout the bag. And on top of that, you do have some type of security on this to where, you know, you can just lock this in place. So your gear is not going to be pulled out of the bag whatsoever. You have to click and pull up. And I will say sometimes it is a little difficult to get out myself. But with that said, the bag is fairly small compared to the size here of my torso. Um, I'd say it's about, you know, the average size of a photo book. And for being somewhat of like a messenger styled photo camera bag, it's very small. Now you guys might be wondering why I kind of downsized my bag and it's all kind of linked to travel light by limiting your gear. Now with that said, I still need to travel around with the Sony a7 III uh, that I'm filming on as well as the lens that I use to capture it. So inside of here, you know, there's decent amount of room. It's pretty simple. I don't know if you guys can see that. It has two compartments, one here on the left and one on the right. And that's it. But just to put it into perspective, I went to Yosemite with my full video setup as well as a camera with just this bag. I find that using a larger backpack with more compartments and more space um, just gives me the opportunity to carry more things. And, you know, sometimes I'll carry things that I don't even use on the shoot. And it ends up just taking up a lot of space and giving me more stress and overall just distracting me from actually shooting and enjoying it. And so that rule of kind of limiting myself and downsizing my kit every time that I go out to shoot to just the bare essentials. And so for now, I am downsizing it a little bit. The brevity bag is still always going to be in use when I do need to pack a little bit more gear. Um, but I think for the most part, you know, this is going to be my main bag for when I go out to shoot street photography in the city. 
couple rolls of film, uh, my film camera. It's very lightweight and it's not gonna kind of weigh you down as you go out to shoot. But here it is you guys, this is the bag that I have been uh, kind of using these last couple of weeks and I have been enjoying it like crazy. Now you don't need to get this particular bag but you know keep in mind just kind of the downsizing aspect of this entire thing and really trying to take away your gear and focus more on creating. Now part of the reason why I wanted to downsize my kit is so that I can spend more time on what's important. And when you're creating anything, whether that be a photograph or a video or content or anything of that sort, one of the most important aspects to that is being able to tell a story. And when it comes to storytelling, you really don't need much. And this is why I think there's one perfect lens for storytelling, whether that be street photography, you know, landscapes, portraiture, there's one lens that I have been using for a very long time that I think is just the perfect focal length. And speaking of telling a story, one of the best ways you can get your story out there is to create your own personalized website with Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, being able to tell your story as a creative honestly has never been easier. And one of the best ways to do that and stand out and have your own dedicated space is to create your own website. Now, telling your story with Squarespace is honestly very simple. They have award-winning templates that you guys can utilize to get started in minutes. There's also a bunch of different pages that you guys can utilize like a commerce shop, as well as a portfolio to kind of theme into what you're doing and kind of your mission statement. And last but not least, you guys, you have full control over your website with 24 seven support. And so if you guys want to get your own website started now, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout for 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Right now, you guys, it's the time to tell your story. Make your next move with Squarespace. All right, so in terms of the perfect storytelling lens, a good storytelling lens will be able to show off the environment, give you know some information on the setting of where you are making the photographs. Two, it will be able to highlight any smaller details within the frame. And number three, it needs to have a very relatable perspective. A lot of what storytelling is, is trying to show your perspective in a stranger's eyes. And if you can somehow utilize that focal length to show them what you see, it's going to resonate with them more as it's a little bit more relatable than something that looks kind of out of this world. So with that criteria in mind, in my opinion, the best storytelling lens is the 35 millimeter focal length. Now, some of you guys may already know this, the 35 millimeter focal length is my absolute favorite focal length to shoot with, but it also wasn't my first. Uh, prior to shooting with the 35 millimeter, the focal length of choice that I personally used was the 50 millimeter. Now, 50 millimeter was a great focal length. It's a focal length that a lot of people start with, um, especially if you you know grew up with like these Canon DSLRs. The Nifty 50 was the perfect little kind of entry level uh, prime lens to get. And so for the most part, the 50 millimeter was all I shot with at one point. Now, the only problem that I had with the 50 millimeter is that it seemed a little too narrow. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, when you look at the perspectives different focal lengths give you, starting off with something like 28 millimeter, that is a wide angle, very, very wide seam. You move over to a 50 and it's gonna be a little bit more cropped in. And the problem with having things that may be a little bit more cropped in is that you're not able to always show off the environment around you. And the 28 millimeter is one of my favorite focal lengths as well, probably right behind the 35. It's a great lens for storytelling as well, um, but the only issue that I did have with the 28 millimeter lens was that sometimes it was just a little bit too wide. There's a lot of information that a wide angle lens like the 28 millimeter captures, and sometimes it's a little bit too much. A lot of times I found myself kind of having to crop in in post to kind of have that balance between being too wide as well as being somewhat narrow, I moved over to the 35 millimeter focal length and that is where I think the sweet spot is. Now everything that I'm saying today is completely subjective. This is not the focal length to shoot. This is just what I personally feel like is, you know, the best storytelling focal length. With a 35 millimeter focal length, it's still somewhat wide and so I was able to capture more of that environment. Uh, when I went out to the streets of San Francisco, I was still able to capture some of the street signs, some of the buildings in the background, uh, and you can still tell where I am based off of the images that I made with this lens. I was able to get much more clean images and I didn't really have to adjust, you know, kind of where I was standing too much because with the 28 
you needed to get closer. And with the 50, you needed to back up a couple inches or a couple feet, I should say. Like I said, I think it's kind of just that sweet spot. And to kind of back up, you know, this claim, think about all of the point and shoot film cameras, for example, that are very, very popular. Like, have you guys ever noticed that a majority of prime lens point and shoots have something similar to a 35 millimeter fixed lens on them? For example, the XA, right? The XA has a 35 millimeter lens. That's just one example here. Uh, the Stylus Epic has a 35 millimeter lens. The Infinity Stylus has a 35 millimeter lens. The Konica Big Mini, the Nikon L35 AF, the Canon Sure Shot, AF 35M, Yashica T4, Minox 35 GT. I mean, and you look at some of these other cameras, like for example, the uh, Contax T2, T3, they're very similar in like a 38 millimeter, 40 millimeter focal length. And I think it's just, again, that kind of sweet spot, that right dead center between being a wide angle lens as well as being narrow enough to capture smaller details. And if you're someone who's comfortable with shooting something like a 50 millimeter lens, um, try out the 35 and just see how much wider it is um, and you know if it makes a difference in your photography. You don't need to do this, but for anybody out there who's never shot with a 35 millimeter lens and has only shot with a 50, I think the 35 is a great way to go. And of course you guys, any focal length is going to be great for telling a story. But for kind of my style of photography, as well as for street photography, I think the 35 millimeter lens is a very, very solid choice for most people. There are guys out there who shoot with a 200 millimeter lens that are able to tell stories very, very well. There's also like the super wide angle guys who shoot with a fisheye and they kind of have that more grungy storytelling look. And then you have the 28 millimeter kind of photojournalistic look. And so whatever focal length that you end up shooting with, just know that you can still tell a story with it and it's all about how you use it within your frame. And if you can successfully hit all three of those criteria, more power to you and I hope that you know you continue to shoot with that focal length and create amazing images. But that's going to wrap up this episode, man. Those are you know the two kind of subjects that I wanted to talk about in today's video, the bag, as well as, in my opinion, the perfect storytelling lens. Let me know in the comment section down below really quick what your preferred lens is for storytelling, as well as you know what you use to carry your gear around with you. Comment those down below. But thank you guys, man, for tuning into this episode. I'll see you in the next one. As always, Minolta Gang.